live. Uh, today is going to be a great show. We are going to go deep into the law with special guest, if I say his name correctly, uh, David Jason Giaramita. Is he a paisan? I believe so. Sorry, I was getting some feedback there. Uh, what YouTube was, I was hearing YouTube. So we're live. Um, yes, I believe he is, even though he's in the UK. I think he has the same heritage as you, my friend. Now it's getting feedback. That was me. Okay. Yeah. So you guys uh, have that in common, Bear. Nice. Well, maybe yeah. exchange recipes or something. Yeah. Who has the best... Uh, um, lasagna a la um whatever you call it um uh yeah dude it is uh that is so stereotypical you know lasagna do you think that's all that we italians eat what well i'm What's a big up with that? <laughs> um i'm a big fan of not heathcliff but what was the other cat uh, obviously not a big fan of i can't remember his dang name right now but that was his favorite food group was uh, lasagna. Um, Garfield. Did you know that Garfield? That was his favorite food. Uh, was, I didn't was, know that. Lasagna. Yeah. That I don't think he was Italian either though. <clears throat> no, he wasn't. So talk about stereotypical, man. Um, what, what is your favorite uh, bit of uh, Italian food besides the old red sauce? <laughs> Cupcakes with marinero sauce. Wait, what was that? Did you say Cupcakes. Cupcakes with marinero sauce. <laughs> oh, man, I'm feeling fat already just talking about this. Um, <laughs> damn. Uh, yeah, we have uh, so we have David Jason uh, Gia Ramita coming on. He's uh, running a little behind schedule. So Bear and I thought we would just fire up the uh, alpha cast right now. Uh, thanks, to everybody, for joining us today. I know this is uh, not our usual time. Uh, we are making con some concessions for our special guest. Uh, he will be on in a minute here. Uh, he is a mastermind when it comes to the law. I'm trying not to say natural law or common law or trying to um, define law anymore, Bear, because from what my education is showing me now, that's just uh, delineating from the truth from of the source of where law comes from, even though I guess what we could call this is really natural law we'll be talking about today, which of course is where um, the true power comes from and, and is uh, of utmost importance this day and age for us to really understand because I think it is the central hub of the spokes of freedom. It's something I was just talking to Josh Del Stoll about a couple of nights ago, the spokes being the idea of terrain, understanding our terrain and our health, um, understanding alternative uh, uh, energies and uh, technologies for harnessing that, understanding uh, maybe something like primary water, understanding um, uh, re uh, uh, agriculture in a way that's done in a way that's uh, uh, proper to the law, right? So the law is the fundamental hub of all the spokes coming off that is going to be the new world of the bike that we're rolling towards. That's a terrible analogy, but anyways, does that make no, sense it's, to you? No, it's a great analogy. And natural law is at the center of everything. And then, of course, you have fictional law, what we call the legal system that is usurped or is trying to usurp our rights and bring us into ultimate control. I don't think we have um, any other choice at this point historically to do anything other than revert back to natural law if we want to survive what we're going through right now. And uh, those of us that know the game, uh, you know, what we're trying to do is present, uh, well, actually teach people how to properly present themselves. And, um, you know, we have an educated audience. We travel in circles, you know, with uh, Beth Martins and, uh, you know, Matt Belair and Josh Del Sol, who are all presenting fantastic uh, summits that are giving us procedures and processes, including the philosophy behind it. And what I'm excited about with David today is uh, really getting into the more philosophical end, because that to me is, a, is the central hub of uh, everything. And that's what brings us back into natural law in the first place. 
Yeah, uh, couldn't uh, agree more. Um, Barry, your mic is has a little bit of, I don't know, maybe check your connections. I'm hearing a little static. Um, so that uh, we don't want when we start the podcast. We're in just a pre-show right now. We decided to, to wait. David's running a little late, so we decided to fire up the live stream. Uh, I will hit record in a second here and start the podcast. I'm hoping David pops in. I did hear from him about an hour ago. He said he just got off a 12-hour shift working in a warehouse. Like uh, everybody, he is doing what it takes to survive in the current uh, old world um, as we all work on our overtime to create the new world. This is the same thing that I have to do. Uh, for those who um, know me, they know that I have uh, multiple enterprises. I have a web development, app development company that pays the bills along with running other uh, types of things with involved with crypto. And then of course with Alpha Vedic, same with Bear, same with uh, Bryden, uh, Lando, uh, one of our co-founders, uh, everybody. It's like, that's how they've set up the paradigm right now. It's like, it's very hard to just do what you love and be able to, um, you know, thrive. But of course, that's where we're moving towards. And um, that's what we're- And I'm a Uber so driver at night. Yes, Uber, uh, which <laughs> is the, which is, uh, you, you know, what's funny is uh, our county doesn't even have that here, not Lyft oh, really? or, or anything. And so when, because um, uh, my wife's a nurse in town and when they have, uh, travel nurses come into town from cities. They're like, yeah, I'm going to grab an Uber and come to the hospital because, you know, they don't have vehicles. And they're like, uh, no, maybe you could uh, hitchhike or grab a tractor coming down the road, just jump on the back. Or um, we do have these things called taxis still. Do you remember taxis? It's the thing you call and then they show up maybe a half hour later. Uh, and it's usually a disgruntled uh, Arabian gentleman who um, probably knows more about conspiracy theories than you do. Oh man, I love taxis back in the day. <laughs> I'm surprised Crescent City has taxis. They have like one taxi, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna hit record and we'll fire up the podcast and then um, we can kind of go into some of the content ourselves and hope David pops in here. Uh, he's running a little late. So uh, here we go. I'm going to hit record and uh, we'll get this bad boy started. And boom, we're back for another episode of AlphaCast. I'm Mike Winter and I'm here as always with Dr. Bear Paul Lando coming to you live and direct from the beautiful Smith River Recreation Area up here on the border of California and Oregon in the great state of Jefferson, where freedom still reigns supreme because of our mindset and because of our community and our ability to think for ourselves, uh, because of the heritage here based in agriculture, based in living in, with the land, uh, such a wonderful place to be. We are so blessed to be here. I kiss the ground we're every morning I wake up. We're just generally uh, cool people. That too. Pretty fun to hang out with. Um, we uh, are having a good time here. We've had a lot of people visiting and, and helping us out on the farm and the, at the AV Gardens. We appreciate you. Uh, I will be posting some pictures. Uh, actually, just so um, folks know in the co-op, um, I started a new channel in the Discord, uh, Post Your Picks because I'm not on Instagram anymore. And I was actually kind of missing sharing some of aspects of uh, my photography and life. So in the uh, Discord co-op, there's a post your picks channel now where um, people in the community, in the co-op, which is a little more private, a little more secure, a little bit more our peeps than the general uh, telegram and stuff. Uh, we will be posting pictures from the farm, behind the scenes, um, I just posted uh, some shots of up on the mountain yesterday. I took the kids uh, huckleberry picking and we went and uh, did a little organite earth pipe installation. And uh, that was a lot of fun. And actually, Bear, we're not supposed to be in the national forest right now. So we broke the rules and uh, went up there anyways. And because we were doing what I felt was a good service for the forest by installing an earth pipe an organite earth pipe uh, to help uh, remediate uh, one, the chemtrails that continue to uh, 
waft over our town occasionally, and two, to bring in more negative ions and moisture and clouds. We will have Mitch, the organ donor, on the show in, I believe, two or three weeks, who um, will be elucidating more on this and giving us more information about this technology that is decades and decades old. It goes back to Wilhelm Reich, of course. Uh, and this has just been a fun homeschooling project I've been doing with my boys. Uh, yesterday was quite the adventure. So I posted some of those pictures in the new Discord channel. Check them out. It was a gorgeous day, by the way. Uh, clear blue skies uh, and um, a lot of huckleberries to be had. So we were feasting on huckleberries. And you know what was also cool, Bear? This was pretty trippy. So we're on the trail. And uh, so there's this trail, it's called uh, uh, French Hill Trail. Uh, people that have seen pictures of, of my house, of my home, you see this gorgeous, really a hill, but a small mountain behind our house. And there's a beautiful trail that goes up that. So we're on the trail, way up in the middle of the trail, really nothing around. And we're sitting on a, on a stump, taking a break. And on this, this uh, old stump behind it, there's a piece of wood that was installed. Someone took the time to install this little piece of wood and etched in it said Bigfoot danger. Um, it was the Bigfoot danger meter. And then there was, it, it, uh, it's uh, etched in it S, M, and L. And then there was a little lever. So small, medium, or high, SMH. <laughs> <laughs> That's and great. So Miles went and moved it to high because we were feeling it in there. So yeah, just, uh, I love great. it. The magic of so this. So we, uh, we did Bigfoot think of your organite pipes. I think I think Bigfoot's definitely into organite. I think uh, that's how they. <laughs> so, made me. so you guys were over here at the farm the other day, you and the boys, and you installed one for me here, and I'm going to start manufacturing those myself. I'm really looking forward to that next podcast because I'm going to be picking his brain about all sorts of stuff because he's a real master at making this stuff. But it's a, a very real technology, and I showed this book, uh, oh, probably at least a couple times, and this is a good one. It's uh, written by a gentleman who was an expert in the military in the field of radar technology. And um, he uh, incorporates the understandings of Wilhelm Reich with Rudolf Steiner, which is very unique. I've never seen anybody uh, conflate the two before. And uh, so it's a really good read. And it also gets into, you know, um, UFOs and the fact that UFOs are... Uh, actually an interdimensional phenomena and not traveling here in outer space as we think of it from far off destinations and that these things are in the atmosphere all the time. And they developed uh, photography uh, uh, techniques with infrared lens in order to see these all the time, including in interdimensional beings, not just uh, vehicles. Uh, most of them aren't really concerned with us most of the time, but there are people on this planet that are summoning certain types of these beings to uh, do their bidding for very nefarious things. So uh, it's a good book. It really gets into a lot of truths and really sets the stage for, um, you know, what we think of as UFOs as they're starting to gear up on that side up and everything. So we don't want to be fooled with that one because, uh, well, anyway, it's, well, uh, it's it, a good one to investigate. Go ahead. And, and the thing with the UFOs beyond that, the alien stuff, you know, uh, there's been some interest. I've gone down some interesting rabbit holes about them essentially being demons. I know there's different, everything is based on gradients of reality. So we have gradients of truth, right? From the darker to the light and et cetera. But it's interesting that it seems like a lot of these entities, which are coming from the center node or the center core of the planet or from these other low or what some would call lower astral dimensions or whatever, however we want to designate it. It seems that a lot of these are potentially lower or uh, lower vibrational demonic energies and it's funny because i just got a thing from gaia tv which is like to me really a co-opted uh uh channel now that's really has a lot of bad information but that being said this agenda on the on the alien stuff is interesting if you relate it to maybe the arconic agenda going on right now across the world it's dr stephen greer is doing this who i feel is actually totally controlled off is doing this like big thing where he's teaching everybody how to now mentally connect with the aliens, which is 
to me like, whoa, okay, let's back up here. What's really going on here? Is this just another aspect of whatever you want to call it, Luciferian, satanic, dark, uh, going back to dark occult agenda of, of trying to put it in the box of sci-fi, but really it's the same thing that the dark occultist black magicians have been doing for, for millennia. Really interesting. Yeah. And in the book I just shared, they actually go into that because they hook up with people that are very adept at tuning into these entities and communicating with them. But the first thing they're admonished uh, about is that you have to know certain things so that you do not get tracked or beamed into their realm or even tracked or beam them in reverse into your realm. And they have a certain purpose on why they want this communication in the first place, but it's not something that, you know, the kids want to try by themselves at home. Uh, you really have to know what you're doing. And, uh, you know, in the, uh, like ascended master teachings and other, um, you know, teachings that have been around forever, they talk very matter of factly about the psychic realm, you know, everybody has different names for the same thing which are the conjuring up of entities from our own aberrant thought forms or discarnate entities that were incarnated here at first at some time, but so, uh, you know, had such a singular focus on the darkness that they get trapped in this realm. Um, you know, Rudolf Steiner might call it the eighth sphere, but it's a real, uh, it's a real landfill for human experience. And you don't want to go there uh, unless you, uh, unless you really got your chin strap buttoned up. Let's just say that. <laughs> hey, speaking of, I'm, I just almost, I'm almost wrapping up Callie the Destroyer, uh, Sol Luckman's oh, book. Great book. Um, we had him on a couple of weeks ago and I've been um, reading about three or four books at a time. As you can see here, I've got a number of books I'm reading right now. Um, and, um, and actually shout out to you bear for this book. You gave, uh, one of the books you gave me for my birthday, which I'm really in, enjoying entangled life about my oh, Isn't that great? Amazing book. Um, but, um, and I'm also reading, uh, of course I'm getting right now into souls potentiate your DNA. I'm just starting this. Um, but, but long story short on the, it's interesting how soul wraps in everything you're saying into that book, Cali Destroyer and, um, wonderful book. I highly recommend it. And if you guys haven't caught that alpha, alpha cast with soul, one of the favorite ones we've done and for me in a while, we touch on so many amazing subjects, check that out. And I will actually be going on his podcast soon bear to talk about Cordal because he's really nice. loving Cordal and he just invited me to come on his podcast. So uh, yeah, he's a brilliant gentleman and uh, love him. It's good friendship that's developed between us. Uh, I get emails regularly from him. So uh, it's the fun thing about doing these podcasts, which I always tell everybody I was resistant to do from the start, but I'm glad I did it because we're meeting so many great people uh, from around the world. And one of them will hopefully be with us today uh, with David. David has a great way of reframing all of this legal stuff, uh, you know, in a much uh, elevated uh, way so that we understand, um, you know, it's all about understanding who we are and, uh, you know, and we got to get our head on straight and our inner game in alignment before we ever even go into paperwork. Otherwise it could lead to problems. Yeah. And I just heard from David, uh, he'll be on in about 10 minutes. So, uh, he okay. apologized. He's yeah, he's, he's rock almost ready to rock and roll. He's had a long day, long work day. Um, and now my audio is weird. Um, the archons are stepping in. Um, and yeah, uh, it's just been a, a lot of fun bear. Like, you know, what's interesting about what we're doing here is there's so much synchronicity between our guests too. It's like so many different things interconnect. We talked about a lot about the teachings uh, of Ra and the law of one and how that tie has tied in and been interwoven. And then of course uh, 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 with, with soul about tapping into um, to the genetics. And then that of course taps right into what we were just talking about with archons and messing with the genes and, it's like there's so many interwoven themes and stuff of reality that are all connecting. And it's really exciting because not only do we on this show like to talk about fun topics that are, you know, 
quote unquote, I guess, conspiracies and stuff. But what we're really all about is solutions and solutions in the new world, which going back to the, the spokes on the wheel idea is really focusing on these things from what you're doing with spagyrics and uh, biogeometry and tying it into Organite. And with stuff like back there, I've got the Leela uh, quantum cube stuff that I've been talking to Philip about more and more and stuff they're doing, countering the dark archonic uh, forces to um, what we're going to be talking about today, which is really crucial and key to it all, which is the law, which is the fundamental aspects of our reality and what makes us, uh, which doesn't make us anything, but is really um, part and partial to the power that we have as infinite consciousness. And anybody that delves into this uh, in more than just a cursory way is going to discover that this is all very real. So everything we've talked about so far, even though it sounds fantastical to some, it's uh, actually verifiable. And then also not just in the outer, but with uh, um, getting, again, your inner game in order, then you can actually verify a lot of this phenomena for yourself. Um, and that brings us to the real import of understanding the depth of what's going on on this planet and the different planes within this planet, whatever you want to call it. And um, and leads us to current events with the GMI, which is the uh, medical procedure that uh, people are trying to force onto the population because that GMI is in fact um, dampening the perceptive bandwidth of humanity, all of those who participate in that, which reduces them to more of the animal arconic level and makes them really ripe for manipulation. And, uh, you know, I did a little post on our telegram today, just talking about how between the poisoning, the you know, our minds through the education and the media poisoning, uh, you know, with over poisons in the air, the water, the food, they've really done a brilliant job as far as reducing the intellect and the perceptive uh, skills of people in the first place. And now this GMI uh, medical procedure is the kill shot because that literally um, alters the DNA's ability to tune into those higher realms of consciousness that really separate us from the archonic animal level. Uh, I, I shouldn't say them together because uh, animals are, are not uh, ever operating with mal, uh, mal intent, uh, you know, unlike these other entities. So, it's um, we're at a real juncture now. And when we see people that are just willingly succumbing to this and even attacking those who are trying to warn them of the dangers, or maybe just trying to point to the fact that it's not a good idea to impose your will on other people, um, you realize these people, for the most part, are already gone. They are joining the death cult and they're going to pay a heavy karmic price especially those that impose their will on other people, but it's incumbent on each one of us to not comply, which again, segues back to what we'll be talking about with David today. Here, here, you know, I was, when I was at the farm this weekend, uh, when we were installing that earth pipe, I told you, I just watched the, the Gandhi movie, which I'd never seen before with Ben Kingsley. And um, that's a great one for reiterating the power of our will to just um, to not obey, to just Gandhi, um, whether his historic, all the precedents of what he did is correct or not, I don't totally know. I haven't done a ton of research, but just the storyline from that movie and from the bit of research I have done, um, that's a great, that's a wonderful model to follow in some respects in terms of the whole idea was just stop engaging at all and all acts all, all aspects of the tyrannical society bow out stop going to the grocery stores stop watching nfl football stop get i mean i know you still have one and it's hard to do sometimes but i canceled my netflix account like this is all just get out of the system in every way you can stop involving yourself 
with all of those aspects. And all of a sudden, as uh, uh, Dr. Daniels uh, so poignantly said last week, your reality that you're creating is just becomes, it flourishes because you're now in more and more in your own reality. That's what this is. This is an opt-in control grid. We, they've, it's brilliant what they've created because it's literally us deciding to go along with it or not. We don't have to. Um, so uh, yeah, fascinating. And today, once David pops in, I think he'll be able to really illustrate that beautifully when, when it comes to language, when it comes to definitions and when it comes to how we define our reality through our own language. And the polarization isn't uh, actually a bad thing. You know, it's people just making their personal decisions on what experience they want. And if other people make decisions contrary to ours, it's none of our business. And likewise, it's up to us to just say no if they try to inflict their will on us. And speaking of Gandhi, his famous quote was, the greatest act of violence that one can possibly commit is not defending yourself. So it looks like David's uh, joining us here. And uh, that's awesome. Hi, David. Yes. Uh, David, you're muted, brother. Let me uh, go <laughs> ahead and uh, bring you in here. Awesome. Boom. Hello. What, what? Hey, you sound loud and clear, my friend. Thank you. So, Sorry. David, thanks for, thanks for being with us. I know you just did a long work shift and... Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I hope you've caught your breath a little bit, but very generous, uh, generous of you to spend time with us today. It's my pleasure. Sorry for being late. I had 9 p.m. GMT. Um, so, yeah, it's half past eight now. So um, I'm glad I checked my messages and um, I'm fed and watered. I've come suitably. Uh, I think it's backwards a little bit. There we go. Oh, no, I like good. your shirt. How are we all? Oh, we are just having a lovely chat uh, and uh, really ready to um, go into wherever you want to take us. Uh, personally, more, some of my favorite stuff of your videos I've watched, of course, with Beth Martins, our, our friend Beth Martins, um, is you have just such a vast knowledge and scope of the etymology of the of the the theoretics the philosophy the history of what the words are what the language is and and really how that in what that entails in terms of our reality so but wherever you want to take it in fact what i'll do is i'm just going to give give the uh, audience a little um uh, bio if you will or a little update on what the show's about and then um, I'll throw it over to Bear, and uh, and then he'll uh, kind of get us started. And then we just really want to hear from you uh, today, David, because uh, uh, you have such a way with words. <laughs> 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 so uh, here, let's go ahead and let me just, uh, I'll go through uh, just what this is, the little bio. Well, we don't have a bio, but basically what is natural law? Uh, does natural law supersede statutory law? And do you have the right to choose which law uh, you follow. Uh, so on this on this special episode today, we have Dave, David Jason Giaramita. Did I say that right? Giaramita? Perfect. Ciao, bello. It's good Italiano. <sighs> Great Britain. Uh, he'll, uh, as we said, we'll be going deep into the law. Uh, and um, in this time of the Great Awakening, many are again exercising their right for self-determination. Uh, change of status corrections, affidavits of truth, conditional acceptance responses to bureaucratic demands, and filing claims are just a few of the quote-unquote lawful processes now being popularized to formally notice those who would otherwise encroach on the divine rights of all womb men. David will take us today, hopefully wherever you want to, uh, but beyond the paperwork ideally, and explain how this is an actuality, a very real spiritual journey. Uh, we'll explore the realization of the quote, I am, unquote, as the only possible authority on this plane, and why it is incumbent upon each to cultivate this inner conviction if we are to reassert our sovereignty. In today's authoritative climate, where words have been weaponized and the truth obfuscated on every level, this information is no longer optional. Natural law will always supersede man-made constructs, 
And the only possible way to navigate these perilous times is to realign and rediscover our essential self. Bear Lando, uh, you wrote that and um, that is pretty on point, sir. Thank you. Well, um, David is uh, more on point from the talks I've heard him present. Uh, you know, I watched you on Beth Martin's presentation and I thought you were absolutely brilliant. And what I really love about um, your presentation is you take it to a level of depth beyond just process and paperwork. And, you know, David, uh, we haven't had the opportunity to talk before. And, and by the way, from one Python to the, to the next, um, you know, I'm, I'm just one consulate meeting away from my Italian citizenship, but I haven't done it because I'm reluctant to get any kind of citizenship these days. But, uh, but I, I, I could do that if, if, uh, if I elected. But, um, you know, I, I had a long journey in this process going back many years and spent time in courts and presenting papers and challenging agencies and getting surprise visits from the Federal Bureau of uh, Intimidation and people like that. Uh, you know, for my actions, we, uh, you know, were putting on seminars long ago that were raided by these same gentlemen because we're simply uh, spreading the truth. I've seen colleagues, uh, you know, really pay the ultimate price. I've been targeted. So, you know, we've shared these things with our audience, but just so you know a little bit uh, about my journey. And we went down every rabbit hole, made every mistake, you know, with paperwork process. And what finally occurred to me over the years, you know, it's really not about the paperwork. It's about your intent. It's about uh, whether or not you've asked the ultimate question. I think that we're all here on this plane to ask, which is, uh, who am I? And when, uh, you know, the name of the game is uh, where they try to trick us is to qualify I am with all sorts of things so that they can have their way with us. And uh, so, uh, you know, what I really like to hear maybe just for our audience is uh, just as much as you want to share about how you got into all this in the first place, if you care to go there. And then after that, uh, possibly take us to, you uh, um, you know, uh, what the ultimate question is in your mind as far as what we need to wrap our heads around before we jump into any of this work in the first place. Okay, I will, I will try my best to uh, <laughs> enlighten you initiates and uh, I say brothers, family. Um, <clears throat> I got into this through uh, access to my procreation. So I have two boys, two sons, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, I had to, after a split with the mum, go through mediation. And after mediation, I was then, um, that failed. I was then left with no access to my uh, boys. And so I had to employ the services of a solicitor, which then um, embarked on a journey up to um, a high court, a crown court in Sheffield, and then a, magi um, sorry, a barrister had to um, come onto the scene. Two years and £20,000 were promises, uh, the fiat currency, 20000 of uh, of these uh, British pounds, um, to get a court writ to be able to um, assert my rights to see my property. So for the purposes of clarity and avoidances of doubt throughout this chat interview, I will be speaking and commanding English, plain English. We will uh, touch upon legalese, perhaps Latin, um, and uh, different you know areas of uh, communication that there are within our realm today. English is primarily not English. It's um, a little bit of history for you. You've got American English, Canadian English, uh, you know, uh, different types of English around the realm. But English is um, from I do etymology, as you've said, Frisian language, um, Nordic invaders uh, coming to this landmass and um, this landmass at the time had Latin and Francais being spoken. And this Babel, Babylon that we have is um, basically legalese. And it looks like English, it sounds like English, and it writes like English, but it doesn't come from the Oxford editions and definitions dictionary. It comes from a book called Black's Law. Black's Law is the language of the London Templars Law Society that have ensconced uh, Great Britain 
England since 1066, 1067, since the deal was done with the Templars of London and William the Conqueror. So all that speak English, it's the common language around the realm, the continents, landmass, however you want to put it. But because we're involved in a public, legal, commercial uh, environment, then that language is legalese, but we don't know the difference between what we speak, um, what we speak of. So English, I am speaking today and there will be no legal advice. It's just an informal chat, but we can let you know that we, my foundation educational trust that started after getting swindled for 20 grand and two years at a, at a Crown Court with a barrister to assert my rights that I could have done quite easily without uh, hiring or getting infected with legal aids, um, a virus of the London City Templars there when you get legal aid, legal aid and you get to counsel because you can't represent or present yourself um, correctly in this legal domain. So um, that's why I got into this. And then I wanted to um, tell my friends initially and my family what I found out by talking to my mother, Julia, um, she was a, a lecturer at universities, uh, Derby University. She was um, the head of the law department under the dean there, um, Julia Jeremita, my mum. And um, whilst going through that latter part of the two years at the court to, to prove that I was a good dad and that I had, um, you know, every right to see my two boys, despite what the mother thought, I was talking to my mum about what was happening at the court. Um, what was going on, what I was being forced to do to comply with. And um, she mentioned um, when I was questioning her about a legal personality. And um, I encountered the person for the first time as opposed to man. And um, I asked her what a legal personality was and legalese. And she mentioned that that's the language of the court. That's the language of the law society. And um, I have a personality, uh, Mr. David Jeremita is not me, it's, it's my person. So I later found out that through my research and discovery that God, the creator, the most high created man, man created government, and government created persons. And persons is not an English word, it's not an American word, it's not an American English, Anglo English, it's, it comes from Latin, it comes from the word persona, and persona is to adorn a mask. So you put on a mask, uh, actors um, have personas and you have, um, you have um, your blood, authentic, um, sovereign, um, man, womb man, because we come from the womb of mum. And so you have yourself, which is corporeal, and you have an incorporeal um, side of you, which is the way that man is uh, recognised legally. So I recognise that a person is not respected when I looked at the scriptures and I've looked at a lot of different faiths, religions and books that we've gone and um, claimed an entitlement such as Mr, Mrs and um, a date of birth and a surname. And we've took the father's name in vain and without meaning to, um, I am a spiritual man and uh, without meaning to, I believe I found a connection to my own personal Jesus, the Christ-like consciousness the wholesome um, opening of the eye. Um, I initially, I was angry. I was confused, you know, um, going through such an ordeal, a baptism of fire, as it's uh, known to most. Um, and I went through the, the degrees of um, discovery within this um, spiritualism and symbolism of this occult uh, world that um, we believe is us. And uh, I then decided to, you know, want to share this information because I'd spent a lot of time and money. And I thought dads wanting to get access to their sons and daughters and even mums, you know, it's, it's for all families, um, the have nots, the, the common people, the, uh, the working class have been hoodwinked by these uh, establishments and societies, Templars, um, languages, uh, institutions, from the indoctrination of the academy at the schools around the world and what we get taught is in English um, and how we're taught that and then what we actually find um, within our discoveries. You know, I've got some books there that I'll reference later. This doesn't just happen from watching YouTube videos. Uh, we've had a lot of chats and hangouts and done a lot of work. So um, that's 
a little bit of background into how I initially had my eyes opened and I was a bit privileged having my mum um, teaching. Um, to, she was a victim of domestic abuse in the 80s and uh, she wanted to help uh, assert female feminine rights against domestic violence, which when reported to the police was something called a domestic disturbance. And the police did very little to help my mum when she was, uh, you know, um, beaten up by drunken boyfriends in the uh, early to late 80s. And obviously in the last uh, 40 years, the uh, statutory, you know, uh, and, and obviously common law assault and batteries have changed quite dramatically and it's ever evolving. So um, my mum was able to give me some insight into the legal uh, journey that I went into. And I was quite angered initially when we all get into this, uh, we all have our eyes open. Generally, we fall to the bottom of the uh, of the chasm and we've got the fight or flight instinct and we either um, carry on medicating ourselves and uh, ignoring it or we stand up and we um, we assert ourselves and we try to uh, make sense of of this uh, free man um, straw man um, person personage and baritary you know and this legal um, system that, that is here the two jewels the streams of law that are running there are many streams of law but we'll just keep it simple as it's my first time on your channel and um, with your viewers and scribes, but um, there is a, a lot of research and discovery I can use to back this up. I'm, I'm happy to take questions, and um, I'll, I will leave it there for now um, as, as an opener. <laughs> okay. Well, it's uh, no, that's that's a great introduction, and we do have an audience that is pretty well versed, and we have covered a lot of subject matter. So you're you're uh, you know talking to a good crowd here. Um, but, you know, when you describe the, the unfortunate circumstances of your mother, it's uh, what we're going through, all of us, with the legal system is not dissimilar to an abusive relationship. And like in any abusive situation, sometimes it's very hard for the victim to um, steer their way, way clear of it. Now, some, you know, it takes a lot of courage, you know, just to extract yourself from that kind of situation. And I think that's what we're all facing today. Uh, you know, when I started this journey long ago, fortunately, I had many years to accommodate on the emotional level because I went through every emotion that you're describing and, and being kind of a uh, you know, type A personality, you know, the first thing I want to do is fight everybody and, and it gets very, uh, you know, frustrating. Yeah. And, you know, what was really um, amazing, surprising to me, I'll say, is when these actors put on a cheap $25 polyester black robe and go in there and play the role as magistrate or whatever, um, when it uh, dawned on me that these people, for the most part, actually know what they're doing, uh, putting in people in cages, ruining their lives, um, destroying families, uh, just all on sorts of unspeakable things. I, I, it really took me a long time to believe that anybody is capable of doing that. Yeah, there is um, a certain element of disgust. We treat them with the contempt that they duly deserve. The magi, the magi, the, the magicians, the magic, the mother G I C um, for the magicians, the magi. That goes back to the stories of. Um, ancient text and uh, the gospel there where they followed a star the magi it can be traced back to zoroastra zoroastrianism about 6000 bc and ishtar and things like it's not just something that happened the romans picked up on on certain attributes of the of the bible and uh, when they re-canonized and um, wrote the new testament in the latter part of the third fourth century um, the council of hippo and etc they've what we've come to see is the, the legal system of the Templars of, of London that have shipped this out through to um, America, China, India, a lot, most of wherever there's a central bank, you'll find that this system exists and the lower de facto courts, those um, arbiters, bankers, um, black robes won't be as privy to the knowledge of what we can discuss and the occultism of it, of this business, um, soul reaping, legal um, manslaughter and um, lawful murder um, as the uh, inner Templars and the actual higher courts or the Supreme Courts that they have 
around the realm, they will be more privy to, you know, like the International Bar Association and the barristers themselves are, um, I would argue, more privy to this knowledge. State troopers and uh, officers over here in England, they often don't have um, a Scooby-Doo, a clue as to what legal and law is and the difference between that. They don't know what language they speak. They they forgive them for they know not what they do. So the, the some of them um, that I've encountered have um, have been very honourable um, with the information. When they ask them, are you the driver? No, I present you my driver. Are you, is this your vehicle? You know, no, I, it's not my vehicle. And they think, oh, is it stolen? No, this is private property. I'm traveling in a non-commercial capacity and I am man, David, the principal, and I have a person, the United Nations Declaration, Universal Declaration of Human Rights affords all humans the right to be recognized in front of the law as a person officer. So if you um, are going to disrespect because they often say, oh, you're a free man or you're one of these um, types. One of them are you? And I say, no, no, it's quite simple. Biblically speaking, God be no respecter of persons. I uh, can quote chapter and verse for that. And I choose not to be recognized as a person in front of the law. Um, as uh, you know, I'm sometimes known to go by a name and a date of birth and a surname, but only when it is a benefit to me or to I. So in this instance, I'm not being a person, I'm not a driver, I'm not being paid to drive, I don't work for the government, but I do have a, a special purpose vehicle known as a driving license photo ID card, and I will present that as my driver to you. I do not claim to be the driver. Um, I, I am not commercially active, I'm in a private capacity, and I am travelling May I ask what language do you speak of, you know, what dictionary and language, what is your um, definition of driver officer? And they don't, they don't know what to, what to say. I'm like, well, what dictionary? You're speaking legalese, in, you're doing a legal job. Are you legally trained? May I ask you, what are your legal qualifications? What, what legal attributes do you have today in a legal capacity? Why have you stopped me? Um, where is the victim? Am I free to go? You know, things like this, they haven't. And they, then after a while, when they find out that, that everything's above board and that I am in a private capacity, I won't commit joinder, I won't volunteer. You see, um, the rules of legal land, uh, the London Templars have got these um, arch governing architecture um, to, to help govern it. So I don't know all of the law. Um, there's far too much uh, in this statutory, um, legal, civil public so you've got united kingdom of great britain for public legal civil where the officers and troopers work and you've also got england and wales where law works the law of england and wales they're very much separate legal is public civil um non-criminal and law is criminal and it's england and wales and it can also be private as well so there's your, your two types of streams of common law running parallel and um, you have to explain to the officers with great respect in the face of adversity and hostility sometimes that you're here to help them. And if they ignore my international fundamental and unalienable creator given rights, then they will be held accountable. And if they don't know what they're doing and they don't, they don't know the law legal and they don't know England and Wales uh, laws, then, then they're going to be in trouble. And I present to them the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 6, for them to check. I say, please, you know, take your straw man and your free man uh, assumptions away. And once you've checked the details and you've checked my driver and you check that everything is OK and there's no crime, there's no victim, there's no contract here. I don't have a date of birth. I was born on and I have a birthday. I don't have a surname. I have a family name and I'm being respectful and honourable. And I'm happy to oblige you on this instance, you know, uh, because you've stopped me. You are forcing me to do this under duress. And uh, I, I would say, please go and check. that I am a human man. I am a colour of man. And I have a person. And I'm presenting my person's personal details for you today. And so the, 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 the courts, the, the, the officers, the, you have to recognise that uh, if you don't know your rights, Aristotle, Socrates, Plato, know thyself, you don't know thyself and you don't know how to assert your rights at law, then one of the 10 commercial maxims of the London Law Society says, if you search 10 commercial maxims of law on the on any search engine, you will find websites and 
um, government sites are linked to affiliated with. These are the uh, things that I've learned to help me um, adjudicate these legal quandaries lawfully. So um, one of the 10 commercial maxims there is um, of the London Law Templar Society is a man that doesn't assert his rights has none, therefore has none. So if you don't know your rights, you have none. So I have to explain to officers, a claimant, anybody that makes a claim, the HMRC, the government, the tax office, the police officers, teachers, anybody that's legally um, interfacing with you, what my, what, are, what my rights are and how I retain my rights. And I will not volunteer my rights. I am a trust, well, an equity and trust. I look at biblical trust and I'll touch upon that later, but I deal with equity and trust law and in equity and trust law, that also has some um, precepts to govern it. And one of those precepts, which is quite fantastic, is that equity will not aid a volunteer. So if you give information freely and you don't do it under protest or previously under duress, then you, you are uh, agreeing to, uh, we'll say, contract under the terms unbeknown to you, and you can end up in hot water. So you have to treat yourself um, very carefully and, non, and be non-vexatious, be polite as hard as it is and non-hostile and just let them know that you're retaining rights. You have God-given, creator-given, um, biblical um, rights to retain. Um, you have fundamental, unalienable uh, human rights to retain and you can hold others to account um, calmly and effectively. We've come quite a long way to, to, to let, like you know, in the highest degree, um, somebody like... Um, an agent for the crown, I mean, whatever capacity, that's uh, that's quite a broad, um, you know, uh, description, an agent for the crown, the crown of London, not the crown on Elizabeth's head, and not the crown of the papacy, there are three main crowns, but the crown of London is where the agents work for the crown prosecution service, the CPS, um, America has the, the district attorney working for by extension, the crown. So you have to let these uh, officers know, um, officers of the crown, not state officers or police, or police officers, that you have rights and you your rights haven't been stolen. You you are looking to retain your rights respectfully and honourably. And what we've learned to do, rather than, than demand and cause vexation and aggression and confusion, is to bring it all back and say that I have a status, a standing and a capacity. And you presume, like um, my status, standing and capacity is a public legal person, but I am, in fact, a private lawful man. So I, my person is public and my person is legal and my person has a name, a date of birth and a surname and a national insurance number. Those are instruments that I'm going to implement in this in this instance because it's my choice to. Previously, we didn't know how to implement the instrumentation and retain our fundamental and uh, biblical Abrahamic, if you want, uh, Judaism, Christianity, to, to name a few there, you know, and... Uh, 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 it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a, a dangerous game to play in some respects because not all will want to hear this. But if you if you reserve and retain your rights and others ignore them, then there are European commissions, the United Nations uh, Security Council has five member um, nation states on that. America is one, England, United Kingdom is one, China is one, the Soviet Union is one, and I believe France. So these have ratified um, treaties and they have um, been, they, they've signed to say that they will uphold them. So these are, uh, un, these are um, what would we say, irrefutable avenues of defence, which are written and codified alongside all the other areas of law that we've come to learn, maritime, admiralty, UCC, ecclesia, common law, equity, trust, uh, Abrahamic law, there's eight already, you know what I mean? These, these layers of, of what we've got, but we use a great deal um, to assert our rights and remain as a private lawful womb man, man um, uh, as a child of God. Um, and as I've said, the, the 10 commercial maxims of law for America, Canada, England, Australia, quite a lot of the land masses have biblical precepts annexed to them. So you will find biblical references. Um, for example, to break it down, in, in the backbone of the, of the, the high court system in, uh, in England is that uh, witnesses will testify, testamentary evidence is given, and then therefore the courts and the jury, the grand jury, you know, uh, in a Supreme Court or a de jure court will take that testimony 
and then they will make a decision if there are two witnesses to uh, establish a fact in a court via a tester. Testees is below and tester is above. They testify and they give their testament. There's a new world testament, you know, these, these words are interconnected and they, they, they pop up uh, quite a lot of the time in different contexts, but the testamentary evidences of two man um, will be able to suffice and satisfy the court, there is evidence, and then there will be sentencing and conviction done. Now in the Bible, in Matthew, um, Jesus is quoted to say that wherever two or more are gathered in my name, then I am there in the midst of them. So the legal system is based on the Bible's stories. The, the, the people that take the Bible, the New World Testament, literally have a hard time grasping this, but the Romans, the canonization of the Bibliotech was done um, in such a way that Santos Bonacci, Jordan Maxwell, their works there have helped me cognize this. This isn't just all my own works. There's a lot of names that I could drop in and mention. Rudolf Steiner, Alan Watts, you know, great old men, Neville Goddard, you know, I can see Nod in there. So that's making me feel brilliant. To, so uh, I'm, I don't need to explain any more. You get where I'm coming from. So we've missed the great good news of the gospel and uh, in some respects and the law system is based on the bible the commercial maxims of law have those 10 uh, maxims alongside those 10 maxims of biblical precepts so as we are permanent member nation states on the united nations security council as i've said they have to recognize and uphold these rights if you choose to retain them as a man a human you can't discriminate against me because i'm choosing to be man you can't um, go against the political social religious ratified international treaties that would constitute an act of war if you choose to further proceed now you have the knowledge of my status standing and capacity the statutory codes that come out of westminster are mandated upon our persons by default assumption and presumption so we have to gently um undo this uh, this this sinful ungodly um you know war that's going off a spiritual symbolic um dark arts war they they wear black the judge wears black, the officers and troopers wear black, the dictionary that the legalese comes from is called Black's Law, so it's the dark arts, and uh, I'm going to yield there, I've probably said too much, but I hope that made sense. <laughs> no, perfect sense. Um, you know, if in the event somebody does commit a trespass against us, um, you know, what you are, um, I think alluding to is how you would state a claim, file a claim, which I think maybe if you could spend a, a moment or two differentiating between a claim and a complaint. Well, complaints can be put in the bin and he who makes the claim is obligated to provide the material facts of the matter. And that's um, law. That's not UK civil public or um, constitutional type um, references for America or Canada Australia, etc. When you when you are dealing with law, there are certain rules and regulations, precepts that need to be fulfilled there. And those that make the claim need to be careful because if you make a public claim or you make any kind of claim and you haven't uh, got the uh, evidence to back it up, you haven't got the material facts of the matter, the burden of proof is what they call it, then there is no claim. So often we find that um, we 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 see that in the public realm claims are made and that would be if it's no evidence it's equivalent to defamation of character slander libelous you you incur damages to somebody by making false accusations so um, we often ask when there are claims in a legal um, environment capacity put to us we require proof of authority and proof of claim who are you and who's the man making the claim we conditionally accept the claim we're not because what we used to do is argue it and get into trouble because you get a default summary judgment because you haven't done business correctly you haven't got um, to quote a biblical reference like Pontius Pilate killing uh, Jesus Christ even though he could find no fault with him I wash my hands of him there's a doctrine called the clean hands doctrine and in law at law those with clean hands and those that are unblemished and in a non-fault position will win if you can get your claimant into a position of fault and show that they've not followed process due process their own rules and due processes and they haven't got 
before arguing a claim, you can often find that there is no there is no standing for the claim. The claim has no validity. The claim has no um, st standing at law because they have they've just jumped a few steps and gone in with their assumption and presumption. So a conditional acceptance keeps one with what's called in honour and with clean hands. If you say no, you're vexatious, and they will proceed within their pre-action protocols. And they will um, they will ignore and proceed. The house will win nine times out of ten. If you say yes, I am guilty, then well, who, how you you've admitted you've volunteered to the guilt. You've said I am guilty. I'm I'm going to pay. So there's the two options there. So the third option is okay. I hear there's a controversy at law. I conditionally accept the claims. I require the proof of claim, the proof of authority. Once the information has been given to me, then we can proceed further. So there are certain things, uh, you know, within this legal, we go from legal to at law level and we go from legal to law and we employ from the civil, secular, Roman codified statutory um, rules and policy. You can't use rules and policy to break law. And if you can prove that rules and policy are being used to break the law, then that puts the claimant in a very sticky position. And if they haven't provided the proof of claim, the proof of authority, and they haven't um, followed their duties and obligations as an agent, a principal in office, we, we often correct the trust relationships and go from being considered the legal public legal person, aka trustee, and we will make the office of whoever it is, the legal area that's making the claim, um, the trustee, and we will become what is known as the set law. And our person can be the beneficiary of this at the time. The Setter KV Trust, of which was established in, in, in Roma in the 1500s with the papacy and the king. So there's a, there's, it's not contract, it's not contract law, there's trust law running, stemming from 1302 Pope Boniface and the Unum Sanctum moving forward from that time and ensconcing England and then obviously England setting up America with the way that we went and colonised and set that up and then the the, the independence wars and the, the ratified um, you know constitution that you have through um, or Canada and America have separately to America but um, the church and the state are here and they're mixed in um, in England England and Wales, not the United Kingdom and not Great Britain. So these, these jurisdictions need to be recognised. You have the United States of America, you have um, the America Incorporated, and you have the landmass America. So you have tiers of jurisdiction across the pond as well that need to be separated. Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia, TriStar State and so forth. So to make a complaint is futile and it will get you nowhere. If you've been damaged and injured and um, you've got your claimant in the position of default and you have got clean hands, then that means that you go into what's called a legal estoppel and then therefore neither party can move until things are satisfied. No fines, fees, levies and forfeitures can be applied until processes have been worked through. And if they choose to proceed and ignore and remain in a position of fault with unclean hands, then you point this out later, um, it should then stem uh, you know, the, 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 the procedure, the claims going forward. And if it's ignored, what we've learned to do is hold them to account by going to um, outside of the, the, the kings and the queens um, courts over here. And we use European and United Nations rulings alongside Abrahamic covenants and, uh, you know, uh, treaties, uh, biblical references. And we would say that there's, a, there's, a, there's an act of war being committed. They've disclaimed their duties. Um, how do we do that? Well, we look for the ministers. In a church, you have a minister. You've got the minister, the ordained ministers from the papacy again. Um, but also in law, the ministerial code governs Mr. Boris Johnson under the Queen and the Queen's government and parliament are governed by an international, non-UK, non-England, non-common law, non-constitutional rule, which is called the ministerial code. That ministerial code governs the executive principles in office. So if they're seen to be breaking that out of house regulation, we can hold them to account, but we have to look to um, if we don't get business done the first time 
and things are done in a it's a war that we're facing a legal war that we're looking for a lawful result remedy for then we have to look at the appellant stages of that and um, on the appellant stage because the court's decision is not final only a jury of your peers or the most high in fact can judge man so we have to uh, hold them to account we've learned to to box clever with what we do and we would make a claim that their claim is unvalid unjust and someone that's in a fault a position of fault with unclean hands shouldn't be able to to move forward because we have that legal estoppel mm -hmm. so um in britain is it similar to here in the states where if <laughs> uh, if your strategy is to stay out of court that you can settle your affairs more privately and not even have to go into that domain in the first place no, that's quite right. Yes, you can. Your paperwork will precede you. You set everything out. You, um, you, the, the conditional acceptance and the way that the because nothing ever goes straight to court, does it? It's it's administrative, and it's somewhat arbitrary where you get um, they operate under notices, the NOI and the SOI, the notice of intent, the statement notice of interest, sorry, and the statement of intent. These operate under the doctrines and they follow these certain doctrines. So whilst you, they used to say back in the day here in, in, in the beginning, I opened, I founded Sovereign Paralegals in 2015. The sovereignty for me has been going on six years. I haven't just jumped on the bandwagon after hearing the word sovereign and thought I'm a sovereign. You know, we've done this for a good six years now. So um, we, we operate in the private and we do everything privately. When a claim comes in, they used to say to ignore it because if you ignore it, it will go away. But controversies will not will not go away by being ignored. The, the, the pre-action protocol and the civil, the civil procedure rules, the CPR is designed to move on even if there is ignorance because your silence, one of their maxims again, is deemed as consent. So to remain silent is to tacitly acquiesce to the controversy. So that's not an option. It used to be said as a, as a, as a be all and end all to, to sort stuff out. So we, we, we recognize that the controversy needs to be dealt with. It needs to be dealt with intelligently and it needs to be dealt with honorably, despite the fact it's coming through an avenue which is not honorable. It's deceptive. It's written in a foreign language with glosser, with, um, with box four rule, corner rule, with um, all these kinds of uh, different fonts and colors and off the page. And it, it's not in a language that we can even decipher. It's not English, but it looks like English. So we, we, we recognize that we have to let them know that the data controller, the I'm doing business as uh, Mr. David Jeremy. So I am not Mr. David. I do business as him and I will be the data controller and the principal in office or the executor um, occupying the office at that time. And I'm very careful with whom I present myself to be with my status standing in capacity as a private lawful man. And um, I sign off with an autograph on behalf of my person, because my person is a is a paper fictional entity owned by the crown that I have been given to manage. That's my that's our insurance policy. So um, we 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 manage the claims with paperwork, and the paperwork is sent in a way that can be proven in a court of law. So should it go later down the line to um, a judiciary of some kind, a de facto crown, not non crown, sorry, magistrate, county, districts, etc., the the civil legal area, we can prove that the claimant is in dishonour if they don't um, action our subject access requests, our conditional acceptance, the proofs of claim, the proofs of authority that we ask for, we will send them using um, recordable methods of post. And we do this all in the private and our paperwork will precede us. Um, and then when it comes to the crunch, most honourable companies, corporations, corpses, will discharge or uh, zero the account or stop the proceedings. Some will choose to proceed and they'll push it to the judiciary. I say judiciary, but generally a magistrate um, for them to preside over as the banker, the arbiter. And as long as you, um, you send an officer into court 
for this um, what administrative. We have Halsbury's over here to govern such things as the jurisprudence of law and Halsbury's laws of England uh, um, will give us certain references from lords themselves, not free man, not sovereigns, but their own establishments, uh, um, presidings over, you know, Lord Denning, Lord Coke. There's lots of lords um, that comprise the commentaries of law for England and Wales. And we, what we do is we mix in a bit of Latin and we mix in a few of their Lord's own quotes and uh, their own rules, a bit of international, a bit of biblical, and our own honourable paperwork where we've conditionally accepted, asked for proof of claims, use the, uh, the general data protection rules and things like this, and say, this is what we've done. We've got clean hands. We're in honour. We've conditionally accepted. The claimant has choose cho this time to proceed, um, I'm not willing to perform and go down to a court myself, so I send my person's paperwork and date details in regarding, because the claim is always against the person. It's never against Barry or Mike or David. It's against Mr. Mike Winner, Mr. Barry Lando, Mr. David Jeremy. So, well, that's not us. If you want to choose to be that person then you choose to accept the full public commercial liabilities associated with that. If you choose to stay separate and retain your rights and present the person and send in the officer into the court via the paperwork and use special delivery, signed for recorded delivery, depending on your, your land mass, you'll have a form of postage which is referenceable and recorded. So they can't say they didn't receive your communications along the lines, especially up to the point of the court stage, um, the venue, the business stage, as it is, not really a court. And then you can prove in a court of law everything what you rely upon and what you've done and how you've stayed in honour and how you've conditionally accepted and you're waiting for, um, you know, mediation on this. You're waiting to get this, um, to get this uh, discharge, the charges, because much like, you know, batteries, um, you know, there are charges. They don't give you a bill. They legally charge you. They charge you with an offence. There's no victim. There's no crime. It's an offence on their rules and policy. And you've offended somebody. You're not really um, suffering a common law um, assault and battery or you've not robbed anybody. You've not taken from anybody. It's an administrative mix up of which they want to charge you. Um, for and because you're viewed as a as a dead entity as they because they think you are the legal person which is a fictional dead non-living entity they charge you back to life they give you charges like we charge up a battery like when the heart stops and you have a cardiac arrest and your heart is arrested they get the paddles and they charge the heart back to life the dead come back to life with a charge so these are the bank give you charges you know when you when you when you pass away and you're buried in the land you are inter rested for your eternal rest you are entered into the ground so they inter rest you the dead are interested and you have dead debts in the bank which accumulate interest so there's a little touch on the words and the play and the dark occults you know symbology and spiritualism that they've used to you know, um, trap us all in this money, religion, language, um, crimes. They're not crimes at all. So the paperwork and the private, to, to get back to your initial point, is the key. If you want to discharge the charges using private remedy, you do that through your paperwork and you don't do it through um, telephone calls or you don't try and win your case in a court without doing any paperwork and hoping that the arbiter of the magistrate will, one, understand two, be knowledgeable, three, be honourable, and four, that you'll be able to do all of what I've just said within a 20-minute, you know, assault on you because they are wanting money and their charges to be paid. Um, and as we're all bankrupt uh, as a nation and we've uh, removed the gold standards and there is no money, there's only promises, you, how you can only transfer via endorsement and discharge the charges be effectively using such things as bills of exchange. And, you know, we, we put that in the paperwork. We point all of this out that we're willing to accept and service the debt. And um, we, we only have our promises as, as, as America and most uh, countries with a central bank issuing fiat currency. It's worthless paper. 
we are the energy we are the, uh, the what they want to get their their um the the what their their pound of flesh um so to speak so it is it's done in the private and you can't try to remedy your case without doing any paperwork and without trying to remain in honor and going to a magistrate hoping to sort it all out in a public venue of business known as a court a de facto court and use private remedy to discharge things like that it, it won't it won't wash very seldom will it wash and you'll just aggravate the judge the the, the banker the robe and they will get up and go and hold a court in your absence and issue a summary judgment so those are my reasons and tactics for doing what we do. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> um, one, one other thing that <laughs> I, I see with that, that was amazing. That was, that Thank was, you. you were, you were going off there. People in the chat are loving it. Um, one thing that I see with this process that it can seem to me like it, it's way it, it can, how do I put this? Um, doing with the conditional acceptance and going through that process, it's like, why do I have to put all of my precious time into that? And it seems very unfair. What about the remedy of the idea of, of immediately sending a notice to the man or woman from the agency or whatever that, that is coming at you? Specifically, it seems like they're trespassing on me on my, as a living man on my time, my precious time, sending them notices and then sending them a direct claim because of that to them. And as a form of remedy versus going through all the rigmarole of, of, of the conditional acceptance. What do you, in terms of that strategy, David, what do you uh, say? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I've just said, that okay. the, you initially start that with the conditional acceptance. I'm just entering onto your channel now. I'm going to, Indie Glow is my channel. I'll um, comment and say hello in a moment. I'm just loading up the, uh, the spiritual journey of being. Thank you, Um so, yes, uh, that's what I'm saying. Your paperwork yeah. procedure, you start off with the individual claimant. It seldom end, it starts at a court. It may end up with a with a, some kind of alleged judicial venue and a banker, you know, uh, judge looking at it later on. Um, but you, you will deal with the office or officer, the agent that has contacted you and made such a claim, whether that be a trooper, whether that be the police, whether that be the IRS, the Inland Revenue Service, whether that be um, many and various legal areas, isn't the way you get some claims put to you. A, a parking ticket can quickly escalate into, you know, a civil enforcement officer can issue um, traffic offences, uh, citation as, around, you know, we deal with a lot of the world's language and, and laws and code. So I'm familiar with the, you know, the procedures and policy of the, uh, you know, the felony um, that starts off very small, but ends up, you know, with, um, with these people, um, claimants uh, ignoring law, using rules and policy to break law. And um, once we appoint them, um, into the uh, new because when you've got a trust and you're in a trust um, and you don't need to know you're in a trust as a trustee to be in a trust this is part of the tricks and traps of it all um, when you verbally or written via written you know communications or whether you verbally uh, on the side of the road or in a court or to a to a um, anybody in a legal capacity, a hospital or any kind of, depends what, what trust we're talking about. There was hundreds of them, to be fair. But um, when you verbally express or you express the correct relationships and you go back to being set law, you put the uh, state, the establishment, the claimants, the government themselves, um, the judge as, um, as a trustee in their fiduciary capacity, then you express the correct titles, then that previous constructive trust will dissolve and then everything is reset. So by doing it in paperwork and expressing it, the correct relationships to trusts, um, you may have heard of fiduciary capacity and what the judges have to do um, and um, officers, a, a state officer, a police constable, an officer over here, not so much a traffic officer, but we deal with debt and debt collectors, we try to help um, vulnerable um, members of our family deal with, um, you know, civil issues such as um, council tax, taxes that have been unpaid or um, parking tickets that have been uh, ignored or unpaid. There are many reasons why people do not answer their mail, um, depression, anxiety, um, you know, um, just ignorance themselves or they may have got uh, 
gone away and time has elapsed, as I mentioned about the pre-action protocols and the civil procedure rules. If you don't answer something in a certain amount of time, they move on to the next step. They give you the notices and the statements. And if you fail to act, then the establishment and the house continues on in your absence. So we get um, questions in our Facebook trust and on our um, private domain with regards to how to deal with officers that have appointed with the DMV and the DVLA over here appoint um, agents to come and take, um, we say iron horses, you'll know them as cars, vans, um, Winnebago's, uh, SUVs, they come to take property, which is registered to the state. And we have to look at, they say, pay us the money, or we're going to take some of your home contents, goods, they come with orders, for goods, for control, for warrants, for taking control of goods. They come with an order allegedly signed by a judge. And so what we have to do is ask them for certain um, requirements, uh, their liability insurance, proof of claim, proof that they can prove in a court of law that they've followed their own processes and they can prove that they've served in accordance with the civil procedure rules and followed their own legal um, doctrines and uh, what would we say there, we'd say statutory regulations, constitutional in America, you've got your codified constitution that they need to follow, the bills, the bills of rights, and you've got also the financial consumer type areas that they need to follow. And if they haven't followed each, each process by the letter, then they shouldn't be at the door, you know, asking and threatening for you to pay, discharge the charges with this fiat currency, or they're going to be taking the van um, the contents of the home, or they may even be looking to make an arrest because failure, you know, to pay as it's got to this late stage where they're threatening you um, to pay. And so therefore you, you would use your paperwork and tell them that you're in honour, appoint the trooper, the officer in their position, because it's a civil matter. We say, hang on, officer, may I, before we start, introductions, um, warrant cards, identity, insurances, liability insurance for the damages that you may incur before we even think about proceeding. Officer, can I ask you what capacity you're here today in, please? This is a civil matter. There are no crimes. You have no jurisdiction within this civil administrative. We keep calm because I'm getting excited now because I love doing this and I've been doing it a while and we've had some brilliant results. So, you know, we, we, we've got a technique and we've learned the governing architecture of the duties and obligations of such trooper officer for a civil administrator. And I understand in America and Canada, and New Zealand, Australia, things are different. We've got it quite a bit easier on this landmass. We're still facing the legal slaughter that we all face, but because we've got the mixture of the church and the state and um, a different setup here with the monarch, you know, Elizabeth, the Queen Elizabeth II, that's her persona, and that's not Elizabeth the Lady being here. She's accountable under her Queen's, um, you know, government, which is handed to Mr. Boris Johnson um, to, to run, you know, as she's passed over to the judges and the government. She's not running things. She's handed over the running of the United Kingdom to the courts, the, the you know, the select committee of lords and Mr. Boris Johnson and the UK government. So we've got it a bit different and we've got... Uh, things that we hold them accountable to and we keep the common law um, and the statutory public rules and codes of the UK separate to you know crimes themselves and we hold them to account and if we find that they've not followed due process and they can't prove in a court of law that which they later rely upon then there will be no claim and there will be damages and for them damages we will be requiring proofs of that now their insurances their paperwork their warrants the judge's name the court we may even ring the court we might ask them what office they're from and bring up the office you know as well as ringing up the court requiring proofs of their insurances and copies of warrants with the judge's name in wet signature legible so we've got vicarious and return um, revocable um, revocable liability for those uh, actions and the officer is now a witness to these civil administrative matters that are about to trespass upon our fundamental unalienable rights and if um, they are going to stand there in a capacity of an officer or trooper and allow these crimes to be committed then they're going to be complicit in that they can't aid and abet a civil administrative matter so uh, we've, we've had quite a few results where officers there's videos on my channel there's audio 
on Indiglo where um, the officers have been present and they've said this is a real warrant. The agent has got authority. If there is no money paid, we're taking the contents of the house or we're taking the car. After the phone calls with I and the questions with I on behalf of our beneficiaries from SPL's Facebook and SPL's the private domain, on those telephone calls on my channel, the officers have left. That's because we've retained rights, we've held them to account, we've required introductions and proofs of authority, proofs of claim. We've let them know in an honourable way. If you choose to, we're doing this to help you. We're not obligated to provide you legal in, information. You should be legally trained. The officer should be legally trained, but he's not. And neither are the agents, the debt collectors, aka bailiffs. And so therefore we, we often find that once we inform them of their duties and obligations and what the, uh, the law of England and Wales requires for um, crimes and, and matters of this nature, you, you using rules and policy of your corporation to break the, the, the rules of England and Wales are going to end up in very hot water. We've, we've got the paperwork to prove what we've done and what we've said and when we've said it and who we've served and who we've appointed and your chief executive has been, you know, put in the frame. And so therefore it, it often, um, and I've got, you know, testimonies to this as well. And we've got evidences to this in the form of the audios on the channel there and uh, on my channel and in our Facebook group and in our Telegram chats, we've got ones that will tell you what we've done and how we've done it and how we employ these strategies and techniques which which use their governing architecture you see we don't know all of the law millions of the the, the constitutional statutory codes that come out of parliament and for for your congress and um, the senate and so forth you can't know all of them the ignorance of the law is no excuse well, how many laws do you have? About 60 million of them. Well, how can any man learn 60 million? Oh, that sounds like a game that's rigged to me. That sounds like a game that I can't play. So for that reason, I shall not choose to play it. You know, and, and when you speak of law, you, know, you sovereigns think you don't have to follow the law. But when you use the word law, would you mind defining which law that you speak of? Because as, as I can see it, there's common law, there's admiralty law, there's maritime law, there's ecclesial law, there's, the, you know, canon ecclesial law type things there. The, there's too many laws to encompass into the word law. Now, the original law comes from the Ten Commandments in, in, the, in the heliocentric bibliotech. Those are the laws given to us. No, nobody can judge us except the most high and we will go to our day of judgment when we take our eternal breath you know um, beware of being deceived you know deception is afoot as i said about legalese it looks like english it writes like english and it sounds like english it's very deceptive it's a weapon of war and uh, warship worship you know uh, the warship the lordship the township the relationship the fellowship these are all the romans rules the romans that have ensconced themselves from the papacy since um since uh, 1302 um you know roughly um over here the roman the roman empire the boat people maritime and admiralty commercial um intercourse which is what we're facing which is legal legal commercial intercourse and uh, that's not law that's their law society's rules and policy of which we are not members of the law society and as we're not legal and we operate lawfully, that's for our person to deal with. So there is a spiritual um, message in all of this which can help you out. Um, I'm not saying that the Bible, the New Testament, or even the original five books uh, known as the Torah, um, and even the Hebraic phonetic text that that was written in, is bang on. Because as we find from the, um, the Enuma Elish in the Middle East, that there is a story of creation and the Great Flood way before Christianity was ever conceived or way before the ninth century before the Roman Empire was ever formed and, and so um, going back to if you've heard of the epic battle of Gilgamesh and the Sumerian Mesopotamia Babylonian uh, you know uh, historical civilizations there's a story of a great flood and the story of creation and pre-Christian crosses in um, thousands of years BC so none of this is to be taken as historical factual evidences. I'm not here to vexate and intimidate and aggravate. I'm here to 
with wear my heart on my sleeve and help you all understand and cognize that this legal system that we find around us with these officers and this language and this civil, public, commercial, secular, ungodly, um, you know, uh, negative, dark, black energy is, is not natural. It's not wholesome. Um, it, it comes from a very, very, uh, from Franciscan friars and pontiffs and things like this, uh, uh, evil, um, I would say, uh, to some extent, evilness that has come from allegedly the house of God, which is upsetting as much to me as it is to the next, you know, mm -hmm. consciousness some, to find out. <laughs> some some would even say that the God Yahweh, the God of the Old Testament was an archonic deity of the Demiurge himself. So it's like, where do you where do you go with this to me it seems like you go to rational order or cosmic law i don't even like to put anything in front of law the law which is just do not trespass against another man or woman and if you are trespassing then you are uh, basically breaking that core law and then uh, that's where notices and claims can be um used so yeah i'm with you man it's like simplify it just the law um <laughs> Yeah. Um, wow. David, crushing so, it. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah, Bear. I, I had, yeah, I just had one question, David. Since the greatest trespass being committed against the people of the world right now is in the name of a pandemic, um, is anybody in Britain using this technique successfully to um, <clears throat> challenge lockdowns and force medical procedures? Could you elaborate when you say technique? Um, well, everything you're talking about, you know, these this whole process of uh, presenting yourself properly, uh, you know, making a claim, um, you know, conditional acceptance, you know, everything uh, and, we've been talking maybe about no, in this uh, totality. And notices of liability, maybe too. Yes, yeah. yes, we've got... Um, we've got mm -hmm. evidences and I've um, effectively discharged on behalf of... Um, um, a brother that must re remain anonymous because it's private uh, in, an, in an Oxford magistrate's court. I have um, been before the representative for the Secretary of State for my own personal uh, person's issues with regards to child support agency claims and uh, the child maintenance services claims. And um, I had to go before a representative of the Secretary of State. There was myself this side and the representative for the, the agent and the officer for the um, agency. Remember, Romans and boat people see agency. There's a lot of C's, the Papa C, the Papa Rat C, the Sea of Paper Rats, um, lots of C's about the waters as such. But um, when you employ and retain rights and you hold them to account, you will see things quickly change. When you appoint them in their correct position, and uh, we're not always uh, fiduciary doesn't just mean judge. It means that they have a, a duty as a trustee to look after the beneficiary. So who are the beneficiaries? The beneficiaries of the of the master trust were, in fact, um, this isn't my words, but if you go through history, they are the Christians, God grant or. Yes, the, the church are the trustees and the Christians are the beneficiaries and the world is the trust res, the property that was placed into trust waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. So when you when you and this is for Islam, this is for Judaism, this is for Christians, this is for the non universal non sectarian remedy for all that we have helped dis as part of our Christian disclosure um, bring about for all to contemplate. So, yes, it does. It does work when you. Use only English and you use law to fight rules and policy and you hold them to account. You keep clean hands. You learn the best thing that what you what you can do is uh, other than, you know, come to try and support me if you can. I'm not here to advertise, but there are ways to find us and there are free avenues as well as a donation based one. We've made it all very fair and equal and cheap um, as cheap as it possibly can be so um, if you are interested in this we can give away our free publications which we give away 95 percent of our work i read lots and lots of publications and i pay hundreds of pounds for books um you know and i i can back up everything that i say and the um the practice directions for what i speak of and how to hold them to account and i can give you references um for 
all uh, countries with regards to European commissions and United Nations commissions, then I obviously focus upon the King's Bench, the Queen's Bench, the equity and trust correction within our private uh, set of KV issues that we have here. But there are um, historical timelines, references, and um, our own publications of which uh, I've got uh, two main ones, which are called a Proclamation of Sovereignty, parts one and two for you to look at, which encompass all the way from uh, the Mediterranean, Roma, Papacy, Vaticano City, you know, the smallest uh, landmass city in the world, isn't it? The Vatican City, the obelisks that come from Vatican to the Washington um, DC and then into London themselves, the, uh, the, the evidences that we have. And the, it's, it's the way that you will win is by having faith and you will be delivered in some ways there. It isn't so much a purely Christian remedy. It can be used by anybody of any faith, sex, colour and creed. This is for all. I view you all as my family and I view us all as one as one family and one consciousness. And um, whether you're Rastafari or other non-Christian, non-Abrahamic faith, you still can use fundamental rights and retain your rights nobody's rights have been taken away from them what's happened is they've been hidden so um well that we don't know how to assert them and there are so many thought leaders out there on youtube with their own websites and their own ideas like the the um parse syntax quantum now time correction sentence i just can't get my head it sounds great it looks great but when i looked at it I know David Winmiller, Russell J. Gould, I'm calling you out. We have syntactic linguistic structures in Oxford, which will do just as well. Um, you know, there are many. That was not just, I'm not advertising or I'm not even being horrible. I'm being honest to you. There are simple, effective, universal ways which we can all hold the claimants to account. But I can't tell you all respectively, given your different continents and governments and land masses about your laws, your constitutions. I've got a lot of publications by um, ones that have done commentaries in our literature library and resource vault on our private domain, where we've got like 420 PDFs. And, you know, that's ranging from Bibles to the Holy Rig Vedas to constitutional publications to Blackstones to Halsbury's. So we've got quite a lot of knowledge and we've got universal um, rules and treaties and declarations and we've got um, Franco Collins taught me a lot to be fair I'm not saying he's bang on and I'm not telling you to go and follow him but he helped me go from the church to the uh, legal system and then get to where I am today with the ecclesiastic the ecclesiastes and the, um, the, the 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 workings there so if you're not Christian you're going to be thinking, well, I'm a, I'm a Muslim, David. Or, well, that's part of an Abrahamic faith. That's Abraham, Abraham, abracadabra. That's your magic again coming into the mix of play. So Judaism, they're quite looked after and well, you know, we're ensconced in it. So what if um, I tell you I've looked at the Japanese Shintos and the, and the, uh, and the um, let me think, the Chinese Sutras. And in one of the Ten Commandments where it is written, where it says, look, do unto others as you want done unto yourself, love thy neighbour. That comes from a man called Confucius, way before the Catholic system and way before Jebus Christ. Uh, Confucius, one of my favourites, uh, next to Hermes, Trismegistus and Thoth, one of my favourite philosophers, uh, you know, uh, I looked at Confucius's teachings of rights, R-I-T-E-S, fundamental rights, the Eastern philosophy, and I worked out that Confucius has been stolen by the church and they've mixed into their teachings a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And they've come up with they've they've basically formulated a language of which is uh, incredible. It's it's a really good job what they've done and they didn't make it themselves and it can be proven. So your rights are spelled R-I-T-E-S and we can help you. Um, those that want to if you've got questions and comments I'll, I'll take them from the chat room um because i haven't had a chance i've only said hello in the uh, room but um, <laughs> yeah yeah it does work and it's very much uh, easily done and very practical and uh, it's managed out of house as well yeah and really 
what we're talking about here is a universal law beyond ecclesiastic, beyond uh, the Western traditions, as you bring up the East, uh, it's based on fundamental moral uh, concepts, right? The morality that's based on just what we inherently all deep down inside know what is right. Um, what we're seeing right now in Europe a lot uh, are these protests, tests, the, the pros are testing you. Um, and what I've been saying is um, maybe that's not the, I mean, it's, it's great. It's inspiring to see millions of people out on the streets in France right now up and, um, you know, uh, showing that they are not happy with what's going on. But I think what we're stressing here today is doing your own internal work will go light years beyond going out and protesting. Um, to you, for you, David, what do you feel if you could summarize for people that are in currently in fear uh, of like the green, someone brought up in a question here, remedy for the, the green pass, for instance, that they're pushing, pushing um, to you. And this is kind of just reiterating what we've been saying this whole time. Um, what is the ideal remedy for that, for something like that? In, in countries, by the way, I meant to clarify, in countries that not, aren't necessarily within the framework of the common law statutes of the UK or Commonwealth countries or the US. You've got, um, you've got to look at your, it depends what position you're in. So you, you've got an offer and you conditionally accept it and you require, if, if you're talking about some kind of pass, um, then therefore, is it mandatory? Can I, what pass, who is it? Can you write to me in your own personal capacity and tell me what it is you require of me to do? And then you deal with that one that's writing to you. So um, we've, got, um, we've got to look at the, the ones that actually, you know, tell you that you've got, to, you've got to do something. Who is it that's telling you and what capacity are they in? So it's, uh, it's, um, it's easily managed. You've got universal, fundamental, you, you, UNESCO, bioethics. You've got, uh, you've got European Commission's rulings. You've got high courts. We use case law. We've got quite a lot of case law that we use to reference their own rulings. We use their own rules against them. So um, if somebody's going to tell you or order you, then we need to know who it is and in what capacity and then what they're threatening us with, you know, and then we would, we would, we would bolt on in a, in a sequence of orders, what our rights are. Are you writing to me? Who are you writing to? You know, what language are you writing in? You know, uh, can you tell us the styles manual that has been used um, is, and then the office who it is, hold them to account there, tell them that you conditionally accept. So you're not saying no, and you're not agreeing to it, but you've got a third option. Are there any mitigating circumstances of which you may not need to? I'm going to choose my words carefully here because I don't want the video to be censored or your channel to get any strikes, but you would, you would conditionally accept. And there might be reasons why you cannot proceed um, as well as your rights to be retained and uh, fundamental. You call them precedents at law, legal precedents don't you, um, not presidents, but precedents, case law. We say uh, we have case law here, we have rulings. I have some references that I can get together if you um, give me some information of topics that we're to discuss next time, if you'd like me to come back and we can articulate some, some questions and we can sit here and, and come back again and I can come prepared and I can actually get you all of the information or I can be because um, I've done a 12 hour shift. I'm a warehouse man. I've moved 250, <laughs> 300 pallets today in a warehouse in the blazing heat. And it's now quarter to 10 at night and I'm very drained and I'm very tired, but I'm willing to come back and provide all the information would, um, areas uh, by, no, by no problem at all. We would absolutely love to have you come back and thank you so much for today. Uh, one very simple last question, if you'll indulge that, and I'm asking this on behalf of a lot of people, goes back to some basics. Uh, do you find there's any value in people doing a status correction, a political uh, correction of their political status and formally noticing um, with that, even before there's ever a controversy uh, created? Yeah, well, that's basically what um, I'm just saying to the, just part typing something to the chat room there. It's uh, is basically what you're doing. There is specific 
corrections. Mm-hmm. Now, this is this is a, a multifaceted answer and a question in itself because one, you need to. We could all do with communicating with higher levels of government and letting them know the generals and the secretaries of this army who we are and what going on um, are with regards to the office that we um, are the executive of, um, you know, so forth and so on with our status, standing and capacity. Um, would it be the secretary? The, we have a home office here, um, Secretary of State, Priti Patel. We've got various uh, ministers in office. We've got archbishops over here that are obviously the um, trustee, well, the, the representative for the trustee of the Vatican City. So you could look at performing um, um, uh, not a declaration, but noticing if you don't claim something in this world, others will claim it on your behalf. They'll claim it for you. So um, you would need to claim and inform that. Um, like, let me put it another way. I've got a video to talk about births and stillbirths and the language. And illegally, the word birth includes, they interpret it to include stillbirth. So if birth includes stillbirth, then the inclusion of one excludes the other. There's a Latin um, pre- uh, translation that goes with that, unus exclusio alterius something, you know, I'm roughly there. Um, if you know it, type it in the chat room, but the inclusion of one excludes the other. So therefore, if birth includes stillbirth, you know, then, then they, uh, they, they presume that because we have birth certificates issued to us and at the bottom of that birth certificate in England and Wales, it will say warning, this document is not to be used as evidence of identity. And when we left school, we all went to the bank. Most of us went to the bank, the, the get a job and so forth and initially into our um, into our um, what involvement into the legal commercial commercial public sector when we was asked for id we presented a social security number card a national insurance card and possibly to get a passport you know um, we will have presented a birth certificate and we will have used that as evidence of identity so we've taken the father's name in vain in some respects uh, biblically speaking and um, we've um, we've now become um, associated with that title, Mr, Mrs, Ms, and the name, the date of birth and the surname. So we are presumed um, via language deception, via our own voluntary actions. You know, nobody forced us to do anything. We just wasn't educated well enough. And they didn't, they did that on purpose with the indoctrination and they led us down the path, teaching us English, which is really legalese, not teaching us about money, um, there was a bit of Sunday school in, in, involved there and there is a, a pastor that talks to you, but he doesn't tell you the real good news of the gospel and how that can be used to repel and dispel the um, cursive language and uh, systems that are upon us. So we'd need to look at the ministers in office. I believe most countries do have ministers in their government um, levels, you know, so there is an inclusion of the church everywhere. So we would need to use various. I've created um, a unique, original, homegrown grassroots uh, process where we proclaim, we commission and proclaim. We're not declaring because D is without D cipher, D humidifier, D classify, D. You can think of many words with D and I'll stop there, but it means without. Yes, D jour. We say, oh, a court de jour. Well, jour is jour, jurisdiction, jurisprudence. De jour is without jour. So D, any words with D in front of them, be very declassified. You know, the CIA declassified without classification. So when you declare something, you know, clear clarity, you're declarifying something. So you don't, you've got to be careful on what you do. So I've created on SPL's Pro, uh, evidence of life, essence and incarnation, where we use biblical Abrahamic references, we use chapter and verse from the scriptures, we use um, United Nations and European um, commissions, rulings, we use high court supreme case law rulings, we use grammatical linguistic references, and we say that we are aware that we are the principality, the principal, principal end in P-A-L, and that we're talking to the principles end in P-L-E. So we, we got the principality, prince, 
and uh, looking at what the princes are and how you can be a prince and who is the prince of princes and the king of kings and the savior and you know so the principality the source of credit because man is born by the waters of his mum and then sometime later after being in the age of innocence there is a registration process to the state and that's where the citizenship comes in, where the citizenship is created and you have a paper certificate. The registration process in England is what I would view as an event. So we are, um, we are, man is never registered, but an event is registered and titles are swapped unbeknowingly by mum and dad to the bondsman of the state, the general registry office. And then um, misconceptions are construed from there on, misconstrued relationships happen. So what I've done is created a non-legal um, alternative to legal identity, which is a lawful form. It's a lawful instrument witnessed by three people. The, and also, if you so inclined, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit as, as, the, as the most highest witnesses. And then three witnesses um, alongside this evidence of life, essence and incarnation, where we say, we man are here and here's three witnesses. And we put our thumbprint next to um, a lowercase calling because a name, a name in uh, i'm helping you out trust me this might seem random but hear me out a name in uh, in in english begins with a capital letter and nouns begin with a capital letter so in oxford english linguistic grammatical styles and in american english and in most english that is taught around the world nouns begin with a capital letter a name is a noun a noun denotes an object or a thing man is not an object or a thing the judge give me your name um, I am called David. What is your full name? Uh, my full name is David. I have a family name, Jeremita, a family calling Jeremita. Your full name is David Jeremita. No, I am called David and I have a family calling clan estate. I am from the estate, Jeremita. I do not have a name. My person has a name. A name denotes an object. It is used to denote an object by its capital letter. It's a noun. So a noun denotes an object or a thing. How can I, man, how can you, man or woman, be a name? You cannot be a name, you know, unless you choose to take that name, unless you volunteer. Equity will not aid a volunteer. So if you choose to be a name, then you've chosen to take on the full public, commercial, legal, you know, um, benefits of that name. You're going to act that part. You know, so um, Jesus was one of the original first care actors, a character of the Bible, so to speak. I am of this world, but I play no part in it, of it. Roughly paraphrased, you see, there are codes there for us to pick up on. So I've created an evidence of life, essence and incarnation where we have David spelled lowercase with full colon, David, hyphen, and then the middle calling. So the first calling Christian name, you know, what your mum calls you or a Christian name, David, lowercase, hyphen, middle name. And then you can um, you can put your coal on there in a space where you can carry on the certain uh, um, syntactic structures that you can use to do this. But because it's all lowercase, it doesn't conform to a name. You can you cannot claim a name for your correction. You can hold to account ones that say you are a name. And so you have a person like I do, United Nations Declaration, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 6, does say that all humans are afforded the right to be recognised as a person in front of the law. So you can politely and respectfully decline that right to be recognised as a person in front of the law. And you can choose to implement your instrumentation. I have created some instrumentation, which is not a certificate, and you don't need to register anything with me, but we have an encrypted database where we have all humans, human, I'm not speaking legalese, it's a colour of man. We have womb mans and humans that are conscious, authentic, authentic um, authority, the autograph, autonomously all those words there begin with au au on the periodic table is what it denotes gold the strongest most precious of metals all words with power and authority begin with au not all sorry a lot some mostly the the important ones begin with au so uh, au authority autonomous autograph yes signature is on behalf of your person so be careful when you claim your, the name be careful when you answer a name okay and look who's asking for a name hello there somebody rings you out the blue can i speak to mr mike please of the mr mike winner um hello yes mike speaking yes uh, it's uh, it's the irs 
we, you owe us money. And if you don't pay, we're going to have you and all of your things, you know. So you've, you've claimed that name and now you're in trouble. You say, the phone rings. Hello there. Can I speak to Mr. Barry Lando, please? Who's calling, please? Oh, it's the IRS about such and such debt. And Oh, OK. No, Barry's not here at the moment. May I um, take a message or can you send me something through the post? And I'll be willing to deal with it. And uh, once my office receives it, who am I speaking to, please? Um, you're speaking to Barry. Barry of the family, Lando, of the estate, Lando. Are you not Mr. Barry Lando? No, I'm not Mr. Barry Lando. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't proceed. We'll send something out to the mate. And that's then you deal with it in the private with the paperwork on behalf of the name. You see, when somebody wants to serve you high court papers, what they'll do is, they'll well, they used to, they sometimes do, They'll find you and they'll have papers in their hand and they will say, hello, are you Mr. David? And I'll say yes. And they'll go, you've been served because you've claimed the name of Mr. David. So number one, whenever anybody asks for your name, you, you don't have a name, you use a name and you are sometimes known to go by a name when it is of a benefit to you. So next time somebody asks you your name, you know that there's going to be trouble coming. So you separate the name that was given to you, which is Crown Copyright, Yes, the legal name, the object and the thing that begins with the noun and a capital letter. And you, you don't choose to claim that anymore unless you knowingly and willingly want to use that name for getting dentist treatment, for getting hospital treatment. That's going to be a benefit to you. That's not going to have many legal. I realize that you have insurance policies and such cares in other countries that aren't the same as England's, but you get where I'm coming from. Sometimes to go by a name can be of a benefit to you. You win the lottery. They need to pay it into a bank account of your person's name. You can give that name because you're going to get money paid into the account. It's the other way around when it's the problem. And so what I've uh, I've done with this evidence of life essence and incarnation is started my own book um, record of uh, of life, basically book of life, book of love, where we have souls and callings collected that know that they have persons, not persons that know that they have humans, because in this realm, we are all persons that have occasional humans, because that's how the legal system likes to view us, whereas now we are man if you like don't need to say humans just man with persons and man will choose to implement the instrumentation as and when so to get that separated we're working and i've got some documents that i'd be happy to share with you which have got biblical references which have got linguistic references which have got high court and uh, and have got constitutional references which have got united nations references which have got um, European commissions and uh, case law references for this. And so these passes and uh, obligations and duties, what they're passing upon all of us are to our names and to our persons and our instruments and not to us. So there is a call by Franco Collins to say that ecclesiastical deed poll, the pollex is, um, is something to be considered and used, but a deed poll is to do with the thumb. A thumb, a thumb, if you look what a deed pollex actually means and what a deed poll is that Franco Collins created was seven points in there to say, going back to the 1302 Unum Sanctum and the proclamations of the house of God and what they did at that time, the claiming of property, um, souls, rights, it's quite deep. And I know we're shutting down, but you need to look at, it, it encompasses us all and it uh, is enveloped by the King of Kings from the Vatican through the other kings around the realm, the monarchies. And um, obviously the president uh, is involved in America um, because they represent a crown of some respect via the Washington DC, Columbia TriStar state, remembering that England went and um, colonized via Christopher Columbus. That wasn't his real name, but went over from England on the boat and colonized and claimed the lands and took it away from the Americans. So your connection is with us and our connection is via the Templars of London and the Templars from, you see how it, it's gone out that way and it's all from 1300s and previously roundabout then connected tediously. And it begins with the name, a surname and a date of birth and persons. You know, when you see a celebrity, you don't ask them for their name. Hello there, will you sign me your name, please? You say, may I have your autograph? Because you want Mr. Michael Jackson's autograph. Uh, sorry to go dark and a long time ago, but yeah. Um, and, and I would have asked for, can I have Mr. Michael Jackson's autograph? Not here, Michael, will you sign me this, please? Your, 
you know, uh, signature legal and in trouble, a name begins with a capital letter and it's a noun. So when you sign for something, how do you sign? You sign with a capital letter and then the rest is all lowercase fancy joined up, isn't it? Well, I autograph and I put the word B and Y for buy and then David, all lowercase, no capital letter for D of David by David. What is that? That has now shown that there is an autonomous man that has applied an autograph. So whenever anybody hands you a contract in future, everybody, or you're signing an employee, you've got, you, you need a job or you need to get income support from the government, from the state, anybody is, a, is anybody contractually, legally wants you to sign something, I suggest you consider putting BY by Mike, by Barry, and leave it all lowercase because that by denotes autonomy, autonomous, authority, authentic. And the lack of the capital letter means it isn't a name. If it's not a name, then it's not the person. If it's not the person and it's not a signature and it's an autograph by a man, then that means that your rights are retained. Simple little things that we can all use that is it's effective and it's knowledgeable alongside consideration if you are of a Christian Abrahamic faith and you have been a confirmed catholic then these types of uh, called revenues um, remedies avenues sorry might work for you because you can call upon that type of uh, jurisdiction to uh, to claim your rights back but for somebody who's not of the abrahamic faith my website is international my youtube channel like yours is international it has many creeds and faiths on there that aren't all white anglo saxon christians um, protestants catholics and, and of the abrahamic faith so i try to include the uh, you know the the non um, types um, Muslims are included because they're kind of in the Abrahamic with the Allah and Muhammad and so forth they've got the similar message and story a father a son messenger type thing you know correlated to but the Japanese um, the, uh, the, the the Chinese um, the Indians and the Sikhs and the, and, the, and the Hindus and so forth again I've had to look at how we can all have a remedy and how we can all use the technologies and knowledge that we have today to show that there is an evidence of life, essence and incarnation. So on that instrument that I've created, you put your calling and your middle calling and your estate name, all lowercase, with some Oxford, never mind Windmiller, I forget that, Oxford syntactic structures that basically is real and it, and it works and it's not needing all that research and stuff, and a thumbprint with witnesses and remember what i said about witnesses and how two witnesses at law are the backbone of the criminal justice system you know and how that will end up uh, trying and sentencing a man because of testimony evidences so it's uh, it's all to play for um and there are many and different requirements due to the massive family that we have and the, the different faiths religions you know that that they use but you can look at any or none of that, you know, and you can present to me what you think you've got. So UCC1 filing, that's great. That might get you so far and it might get some recognition, but you can't, for one, say, we don't recognise the government, we're not part of the government, we don't agree with what you're doing, but can we have one of your forms to fill in, <laughs> to send you back, for you to recognise that I am not that and I get this now, but we don't recognise you, we don't want anything to do with you, but we'll take one of your forms and we'll fill it in and we'll send it you back for you to look at and put in your filing cabinet. Isn't that a bit hypocritical? And, and number two, <clears throat> if this is true with what Santos and Jordan Maxwell and others have brought to us across their lines of discovery and research and souls and property and things have been claimed by the house of God, then how does defiling a UCC statement claim all that back and assert your rights back to where you need them to be. You've missed a massive point there and you've gone following money and treasury and TDA accounts and certain things. You've got the, the, the sites like this when you should be open and you should be just taking, I know there's a rush and I know there's an urgency and I know it's the most serious thing to a great many of us, but that goal of money and a treasury direct account, I believe is a bit of a um, diversion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David, I, I agree with all that wholeheartedly. I went down a lot of those paths and uh, came to the conclusion in, you know, more recent years with exactly what you're saying. 
Um, but uh, yeah, we definitely need a part two or maybe even a part three and four with you because there's so many uh, things I'd like to explore with you. So can you maybe for our audience, just tell us one last time uh, where they can find you and all of this material? Um, yes, if it's okay, um, I will send you on Telegram um, a link to our, uh, uh, yeah, in Telegram, because that's where we're mostly chatting, isn't it? A link to our groups and uh, from there. You can find us. There is kind of my I put into the chat room. I'll put into the chat room. You can go and look at my home pages of this uh, foundation educational trust where um, where I promote and work in the private uh, what I do. And from this link, you can also press the blue F. And I know many of you are going to cringe here and say no, David, because <laughs> and I can just see it. But you can press the blue F and you can go into the public Facebook trust that we have. Um, it is SPLS. PRO.com. And I'll put that into the chat as well. And you, by all means, please go and check um, that homepage and have a read of that. I don't know if it will allow it. Yeah, I'll, it has. I'll put it on the show notes too for those listening to the podcast. If, if you're on iTunes or Spotify or whatnot, it um splspro.com. Thank you. And uh, also your YouTube channel. Uh, which I shared a link in the chat, uh, is uh, known uh, as Indie Glow. Uh, I, if you just search it in YouTube, I-N-D-I-G-L-O-W, and I'll have all of those links in the show notes below um, so that you can uh, follow David and also um, look at the opportunity of joining him and donating and supporting him on splspro.com. David's doing really important work, so let's support him. Uh, and you really encapsulated everything beautifully today. Um, I would um, be very interested to see how you are when you're rested, because uh, this is, if this is you after a long day of work with the energy right now I'm seeing, then um, I would love to see you <laughs> when you're fully ready to go. Tired eyes. Because <laughs> so, you just crushed it, my man. That was awesome. And um, yes, thank you so much. And I would love to use my treasury direct to uh, account to pay off uh, my uh, new uh, travel trailer here but um uh yeah it's easy to get down those rabbit holes and i've heard that you can use those to pay off debts but um and i've known people who've done it successfully but i've also as bear would a uh, testament to this that he's those people that have been had visits from agents at their door by doing that so um in the end it's uh yeah in the end, it's all about um, knowing your inner truth and knowing that this is a spiritual battle we are all in right now, as you were just um, going over with your book of life and the soul and, 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 and notating that we are in a spiritual battle. And for those people who are atheists that are, are more based in the materialism, that's fine. We accept you too and all that, but just know that you are being set up perfectly for the system to be taken advantage of. If you, if you can at least start to broach the idea that spirit goes beyond the material, that this reality goes beyond the material, or at least what the current materialist, which is the religion of this day right now, um, is currently trying to push down all of our throats. So, wow, that was so amazing, David. Thanks so much. And we will definitely have you on for a part two. I will have a lot more questions <laughs> too, as um, I'm personally going down this journey right now myself and learning how to do right notices and and in claims because one thing that bear and i stress a lot too is by obviously having someone like yourself as a guide is important but then being able to alchemically put the words on the paper yourself versus taking yeah. them from somebody else and just replacing a couple couple of words on the piece of paper it's very important i believe to write the notices and claims yourself from scratch of course use templates of course and all that but um, yeah, so I'd love to go deeper into all that stuff in the future. And then also for me as a history buff, I love going into the history more um, and even what is history, what is the story that we're told and uh, how that relates to it all. So David, thanks again so much, my brother. We'll let you go uh, get some rest. And uh, for those who enjoyed this talk, please give us a thumbs up. Please uh, share it. Please subscribe to David's channel. Follow him on his website. Um, and uh, David, uh, last question: Are you? Do you have a Telegram um, channel yet? Are you? Are you building that out as well? Um, if so, we will share that in the show links too. 
Yeah, I've got, um, I have two. I've got one that's just exclusively for those that uh, come to our website. Uh, it's it's £12 a year, so it's nothing expensive. It's not like an, a, a big monthly fee. So those that are uh, um, with us supporting um, and beneficiaries of our private trust, then they get access to the private uh, chat there, should they wish to want to come along. And then we have a public uh, Telegram chat um, I call it an open chirp. So we've got um, two links that I can um, share. That's not a problem. Wonderful. And um, the, the website has got the Facebook link on as well. You've given my uh, Indiglo channel out there. I've put some comments into the, the room, so they should be able to pick that up. Uh, the king with the fist bump and my sovereign salute, as I call it. Uh, then you can find that. And those that are there now with us live will be able to find that link. Um, there's the, the public telegram chat where um, we are I'm quite uh, sporadic at the minute because um, mm -hmm. I work four days on four days off but the 12 hour shifts for four days so 48 hours in four days and then I, I've just finished that today yeah and then um, oh, I'm gonna have four days off so I've got a lot of admin to be catching up with and you will find us myself and Kevin there's a man called Kevin that helps me out massively um, and I help him. He's done some incredible work. Um, we've got some admins that I must say thank you to. Um, without them and their um, help, you know, it would it wouldn't be happening. So as much as you can appreciate, you know, you can't do everything yourself, and it is a family effort. So, I've got some brilliant, excellent, wonderful admins alongside myself and Kevin. There's a man called Greg that manages and builds the website. He's presented everything that you'll see um, on SPLs to what it is now. He's he's, he's amazing. Um, technician Wonderful. I was really lucky and blessed to find him so um, that's the telegram chat public one gone in there you've got all the other links out so um, just Wonderful. to just just to finish though where you said about where we've talked about treasury and this is important though um, money um, the lack of money money is not money because it's backed it needs to be backed intrinsically it needs to have intrinsic value and with the removal of gold standards and the paper-based fiat system by the fed or by the bank of england by central banks themselves they're printing money that's on paper that isn't backed by anything we our um like you know commercial intercourse interfacing um, with companies and getting credit sent by companies to our bank that we then put onto cards and transfer that credit with that card. There's no value in any of this. It's our time for digits that are created by a bank. As most of you know, I'm more than aware, but for those that, you know, um, where we've talked about transfer, discharge, discharging the charges, when you see finance and financial bills and uh, accounts that are sent to uh, utility bills, um, from the courts, bills, bills from child support agencies, whatever. They're not bills, they're statements and they're charges. They're not actually, but we know them as bills. And then we've got to present our bills, our dollar bills, our euro bills, our pound notes to discharge them with. It's essentially paper that's created by private bankers that are generally drunken white racist, may I say that, because uh, that's generally who they, uh, you know, are found to be uh, elitist um, non-emotional, non-loving, greedy tycoons, um, to put it better, more uh, politically. But um, the national insurance number, or your social security number, I would view as our master trust account. We would look at transfer and um, by an endorsement, transfer of an endorsement discharge um, to these charges using the persons, not ours. Remember, it's an instrument and we're giving it to use. It would be the insurance numbers. Remember that it's an S I N SIN social insurance number. Just so happens to come out as SIN and um, national insurance number for UK. And um, we've got insurance. So what's that insurance for? We have a treasury in the Queen's Department of Government. It's called the Treasury Department, linking to Treasury direct accounts. Now, who else has treasures? We spoke about water and charges and electricity. Pirates have treasure. The Romans, the pirates, the treasury department. So that treasury department would be probably more ours than actually the Queen's. And so these insurance numbers that we know as national or state social, in, in, you know, indemnifying numbers there, it would be what we would use in bankruptcy as the nations are all bankrupt. It can be proven. I have freedom of information reports from the Bank of England and we've got historical 
and workings by a professor, I think it's of a university in, of England called Professor Richard Werner. If you'd like to search on YouTube for an English professor that studies monetary mechanics and teaches it for his own actual job, and he gets paid at a University of England to do this to students. So it's not fallacy, it's not hearsay, it's not hokum. Professor Richard Werner. You might even come across a video of him on RT Renegade Inc. News being interviewed, outlining all of the bankruptcy and the insolvency of, of which we've come to know of today. That's um, part of the bondage system, the surety that we find ourselves ensconced into. So as part of our, you know, our joint ventures, that's important to say that we can only use promises to pay when we get a banknote out from our wallets. Um, here in England, it does say at the top the message. It's in tiny, tiny printed letters that you need a magnifying glass to read, but it does say, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of five or ten or whatever note uh, bill it is. Um, it will say, you know, five or 20 or 50 pounds. So if, what is that telling you? It's telling you it's a promissory note. And tomorrow on my channel, I'm doing a video which is uh, focused on the bills of exchange, notes, checks and bills special where I can go through to help um, England. And I believe America and uh, other countries have bills of exchange acts and bills um, or architecture within their monetary mechanics of fiat fiscal government rules and regulations. So there's something to chew on there for others that might be eagerly awaiting and wanting enlightenment into what Mike's just touched upon and the loose thread throughout this chat. It's very real, it's very relevant and it can be proven. So it's about time we, we also um, conquered the fallacies of money and yes. um, what what our true energy children are our true our procreations are our true diamonds and gold our love and our respect and our trust for one another trust is man's one true currency the fact we trust one another we love one another openly unconditionally that's a currency that's more valuable than anything that could be given to us by a bunch of you know private bankers <laughs> here here love it well, hey, thanks, David. And, and I know Baron, I would love to, on part two to go into the currency <laughs> um, and uh, everything involved with that, because that's a big passion of mine, uh, working in uh, in actual real decentralized uh, digital currency uh, and things that are related to our actual energy uh, and, as human spirit and soul and not uh, based on, um, you know, the archonic uh, slave debt system so um, yeah, that's okay. that's that's my favorite topic and david uh, you are brilliant today thank you so much and uh, i look forward to part two yes we better cut it now or we'll continue to go forever i just had someone show up my mom just showed up uh she's like i need you so i'm gonna go awesome. and uh, yeah <laughs> yeah um but hey thanks again david so much this will go out on uh uh on all of our channels on uh so if you want to share it i'll send you the link to that and uh thanks everybody in the chat on d live thanks everybody for um uh for joining us on youtube as well and on fakebook and we look forward to seeing you next week with the one and only Owen Benjamin. That should be quite a ride and will be a fun one. So uh, we'll see you next Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We love you. We, we uh, appreciate you. And remember, get outside, get in nature, go grow something, go for a hike. Mother Nature is our best teacher. We love you. We'll see you next week. Cheers.